Today, we are going to explore the meaning of the word sleep in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 30. So I've got here, why many sleep? And we'll just read here where it says in 1 Corinthians 11, 30, for this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. It's a very, very short verse, and <clears throat> if you read it quickly, you can, you can pretty much read, read anything into it you want, right? Um, but we're going to explore it and see from the Greek if, if what, it, what it is that Paul is getting at when he says many are asleep, because, because <clears throat> all of us sleep, right? <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we all sleep, right? So what is he saying? Many are asleep. So what is Paul saying here? <clears throat> Surely he does not mean nightly sleep, right? Because if he meant nightly sleep, then it, it would have to read everybody sleeps because there's no distinction right if, if you say many sleep but not everybody sleeps well <laughs> those who are sleeping are getting the blessing and he's already said for this reason many are weak that's not a blessing and sick that's not a blessing so the next thing to say many sleep is highly unlikely to be a blessing and if it just meant regular sleep then it would be a blessing and lots of lots of us would like to sleep right for nine hours non-stop every night wouldn't that be great whoa okay so how should we discover Paul's meaning all right what what I've got here is we explore the verse this is the simplest way to begin a study we just simply we just simply focus on the verse before we expand out and look at other things and the smallest, easiest study, as I say, is to justly look at that one verse. So, we'll read it again for this reason. <clears throat> okay, we stop here on these first three words. For this reason. What reason? Okay, in this case, in order to be able to understand those first three words, we have to look back one verse, verse 29. He said, he who eats and drinks in an unworthy or irreverent manner, eats and drinks, the, the Passover, bread and wine, eats and drinks judgment to himself, damnation or, or you know, judgment and so on, not discerning the Lord's body. So by, by not discerning the Lord's body, then we come to verse 30. For this reason, because they were not discerning the Lord's body, because of that reason, many in the church are sick. And, <clears throat> okay, the, um, the Greek says strengthless. Right? So it says, many are weak or strengthless, strengthless Christians, and many are sick. Okay, we know what sick is, diseased or infirm or ill. And then that last little bit that we're exploring is, and many sleep. Okay, <clears throat> so I looked up the Greek here, and it's the Greek word 2837. Now, <clears throat> my first simple summary here is that this sleep that Paul is using this 2837 fits with two other negative results for wrongdoing. So we're still focusing just basically right on this verse and he's saying you're doing something wrong, you're, you're not discerning the Lord's body, you're taking the Passover in an irreverent or unworthily, right, um, in an unworthy manner. And so the negative results of this wrongdoing are strengthless, many are strengthless, many are sick or diseased or in, infirm or ill, and many sleep. And so I'm leaning heavily towards that third category, sleep is a negative, and regular sleep is a positive. So I'm not thinking it's, it's regular sleep. Okay, so we could, let's see, so we should expect this sleep to be something negative, right? Okay, so <clears throat> now we're going to look at the same word that 2837, we're going to look at that word <clears throat> in other places in the New Testament, right? Because this is not the only verse where that, verse, where that uh, Greek word 2837 is used. 
Um, actually, Paul uses 2837 five times in the book of Corinthians. And that's where we're going to go through all five of them. In 1 Corinthians 7, 37, it says, A wife is bound by law as long as her husband lives. But if her husband dies, that's the word that, that over there got translated sleep. Right? So in this verse, when Paul said 2837, the, the translators gave us the word dies or be dead. Right? So if her husband dies or be dead or is dead, then she's at liberty to be married to whoever she wishes. So it, it obviously means dead because <laughs> they translated it dies, but it's the word, the same word that Paul used where they said, and many sleep. Right? It's, it's just not as helpful as it could be when these translators give different English words for the same Greek word. Okay. Then we come to 1 Corinthians 11.30. Okay, we've read that several times. And many sleep. It's the same 28.37. Right? Okay, then we come to 1 Corinthians 15.18. And there it, uh, it says, Then also those who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. Okay, this, this is pretty obviously... People who have died, just like we saw when the husband is dead or dies, right? This is pretty obviously people who have fallen asleep, and <clears throat> there's no word for fallen in the Greek text. It's just this one word, 2837. So the English translators gave us an extra word, fallen asleep, instead of just saying, like Paul is reported to have said in verse 30, sleep. So, so you could just as easily translate 11.30, 1 Corinthians 11.30 as, many have fallen asleep. <laughs> right? But, but, you know, why the translators did what they did, I'm not exactly sure. If it's the same Greek word, 28.37, I vote for, always render it the same English word. <laughs> and fallen asleep, you know, that, that goes back into verse 39 there. It says, if her husband, and it could read, be fallen asleep, right? then in verse 30, it could read, and many have fallen asleep. And here in, in uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 18, of those who have fallen asleep in Christ, and then in verse 20 of chapter 15, but now, in Christ, now, but now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Okay? So we've got two fallen asleeps, we've got one dies, we've got one sleep. Now we come to 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, right? <laughs> Which obviously is negative, right? Because, because if it was positive, yay, we're all going to sleep. <laughs> it's, it's like we're not all going to be asleep because he's saying some of us will still be alive, right? And we can get that from other verses. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. So when Christ returns, there's going to be a change for those who have fallen asleep, the dead in Christ, and there's going to be a change for those still alive in Christ. Right? So Paul never uses, <clears throat> in, when he writes to the Corinthian church, he never uses this 2837 for anything except fallen asleep or dead. Right? Except you could question that one verse that we've been looking at, you know, uh, 1130. Right? So, so if he meant in 1130, if he meant spiritually sleep, and in all other, in the other four places in the Corinthian letter, because he's writing one letter to one group of people, so if he meant something different, you would have thought he would have added a word or two in the Greek to help modify it. So, so all five times, he seems to be saying, are dead or have fallen asleep, right? And if that's the case, then when we go back to verse 30, it says that um, 
for this reason you, you, you're activating judgment against yourselves because you're not discerning the Lord's body and for this reason many are strengthless over there in the church in Corinth and many are weak, uh, and many are sick or ill or infirm and, and you've gone from a strengthless Christian to a diseased or sick Christian and the last category could mean spiritually asleep but it seems to much more likely mean you died they died off they died prematurely they died when they didn't need to die and and they could have been healed and see Passover is about by this by his stripes we are healed and if you're not discerning the Lord's body by his stripes that we are healed then Corinthian Corinthian church members could have died off prematurely because they weren't discerning the Lord's body. They weren't asking for the elders of the church to come and anoint them so that they could be healed. And so since they didn't ask, they didn't get. They just died. And, and, and that, would, you know, that would fit with what Paul. Now, I don't, I don't want to say that this Greek word never means spiritual sleep or that it never means regular sleep. Unfortunately, it can be used in all three ways, right? So, so it's like, why, why didn't Paul make it more clear? I'm sure Paul thought it was clear, right? And to me, the fact that it's descending or it's, it's increasing in severity, right? When he says strengthless Christians, that's, that's not good, but it's not really terrible, right? Okay, then he says, you Christians in Corinth are diseased or sick or ill. Well, okay, this is getting this is getting bad because none of us want to be diseased or ill or sick, right? So he's gone from strengthless, which is not good, to sick or ill or diseased, which is pretty bad. And the last one seems to fit the slide of it's even worse. People are dead, right? Because they're not discerning the Lord's body. So. Um, in the absence of Paul giving us more Greek words, <laughs> um, I, basically my, my approach to this is that um, since Paul uses this Greek word five times to the Corinthian church and the English people give us dead, sleep, fallen asleep and sleep, but if you, if you package them all to the obvious meaning in the other verses, all the other verses to the Corinthians, they all indicate dead people. And this is the only one where the word that can be translated into different kinds of sleeps, since he makes no distinction, he just uses the word again, is highly likely. And, and that's my conclusion that in 1 Corinthians 11.30, for this reason, Many are weak and sick and, and fallen asleep. It's best understood to mean they died or they have fallen asleep prematurely.